Hello to all of my Star Wars comic book geeks. Dante D here and welcome to the channel where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff. 2020 was a huge year for Star Wars comic books. Latter half of 2020, uh, Star Wars comics were front and center and they just exploded in the comic book collecting community. That is just continuing into 2021 and you can only expect with all of the news about Disney Plus series for Star Wars and Star Wars movies and other Star Wars content that the demand for Star Wars collectible comics is going to increase. So today we're going to be talking about the hottest Star Wars comic books that you should invest in before it is too late. Starting with our first book here, Darth Vader number three. What is the significance of this book? Well, this is the first appearance of Dr. Aphra. And if you don't know who Dr. Aphra is, she's a character uh, that has become wildly popular in such a, a short period of time. Uh, she first appeared, uh, of course, in uh, Darth Vader number three. This is the comic book series from 2015. So she's only been around for about five years now. And uh, the approximate value of this book is between $20 and $200, definitely uh, depending on condition and my readers pick uh if you're if you're new to the channel uh you'll know if you if you're new to the channel i just want to explain to you that uh i do these readers picks uh for people that don't necessarily want to s drop all that cash just for one single comic book and they just want to read the story i've said it many times on this channel before i am more of a comic book reader than a comic book collector now and i just love reading comics. So if you're like me, you just want to read the story, check out some of the reader's picks. The links will be in the description. And of course, reader's pick for this one is Darth Vader Volume 1. Dr. Aphra is expected to make some sort of appearance in Disney Plus series um, in, in the future. So I think that's why there's so much attention being given to this particular character. Uh, and of course, just wanted to mention too, the uh, books that are appearing in this list today are in no particular order. Going to our next book here, we have Star Wars number 42. And this is from the uh, original Marvel run on Star Wars uh, from the 1970s and the 1980s. The significance of this book is it is the first appearance of Boba Fett, Emperor Palpatine, Bosk, and IG-88. But of course, I think everybody wants this book primarily for... Boba Fett. Boba Fett has been a hugely popular Star Wars character since he was first introduced uh, back in the 80s. And it's really funny because he wasn't really that much of a significant character. But nevertheless, he became popular. And I think it was because of the toy. Everyone loved the, uh, the original Kenner toy of Boba Fett. But to this day, he's one of the most popular Star Wars characters and because of that this comic book is really really expensive as you can see the approximate value for star wars number 42 is between 150 dollars to 500 dollars of course depending on condition but if you want to read the story again the reader's pick will be star wars the original volume marvel excuse me star wars the original marvel years volume three i actually have that book and it's great i'm really happy that marvel decided to reprint all of the uh their original stories from the from the bronze age and these big thick epic collection books they're just wonderful and i think they're really great value for the money if you want to read this amazing comic and any others from the original marvel years uh again the link will be in the description star wars jedi versus sith number one and the significance of this book is uh, it is the first appearance of Darth Bane and Darth Zana. Now if you're a casual Star Wars fan you probably don't know who Darth Bane and Darth Zana are. Uh, they are actually well actually sorry Darth Bane is the Sith Lord who's credited with creating the rule of two and from the Star Wars movies you'll know that there are only two Sith Lords at a time. One who 
has the power and the apprentice who craves the power and is expected to eventually overthrow his or her master. And this comic here is the first time that we see Darth Bane and Darth Zana in a comic book. However, Darth Bane and Darth Zana first appeared in novels, actually. And those are the reader's pick for this book. They are the Darth Bane trilogy. And I have the Darth Bane trilogy. I've read it. And I have to say, uh, of all the Star Wars books that I've read so far, the uh, Darth Bane trilogy has to be among my favorites. I've kind of started this year-long... Actually, it's not really a year-long. It's pro- we're going. I'm going into my second year of trying to read almost every single Star Wars book, both legend and canon ever written uh make him make i'm doing okay uh with them (laughs) i still have a lot more to read but uh i I absolutely love star wars novels and i definitely recommend even if you're not a big reader of novels read these they're an easy read and the story is just stellar drew uh, carpetian uh if you need more selling on him he is uh, an author that actually worked he was the head writer for the Knights of the Old Republic video game. And if you've played that video game, you'll probably know just how amazing it is. Just stellar, stellar video game. And he continues to show us how talented of a writer he is in uh, these three novels. So I highly recommend you pick them up. Uh, These novels were published at one time in like kind of like an omnibus edition. I don't know if where it's like three novels in one. Don't know if that's still in print, but I know for sure these uh, the individual novels are still in print. Again, highly recommend you pick them up. The link is in the description. Uh, now, unfortunately, if you're looking for this particular comic book in, uh, in some sort of a trade paperback, I don't think Marvel has gotten around to reprinting these, uh, these, these Star Wars issues yet because at this time uh, i believe star wars was being published by i think it was it's probably idw at this no or was it dark horse uh anywho at this time when this when this book came out uh, marvel was not publishing star wars don't think they've gotten around to publishing the uh the trade yet star wars number 68 again more original marvel years goodness with uh, Star Wars number 68. Uh, the significance of this book is uh, it, it's actually the first mention of the Mandalorians. It's the first appearance of uh, Dengar. Now, if you have Disney Plus or if you've just been reading what's popular right now in pop culture, you'll know that the Mandalorian on Disney Plus is uh, one hell of a show and it's really, really hot. Uh so anything that has to do with Boba Fett or the Mandalorians appearing in comic books is they're just spiking in price. This particular book here is also appreciated for uh, its cover. It's really really nice cover featuring Boba Fett. Approximate value for this book is between fifty and three hundred dollars, of course, depending on condition. And the uh, reader's pick is uh, this one here. As you can see, they took the cover and put it. On the cover of this uh, epic collection. Reader's pick is Star Wars Original Marvel Years Volume 4. I also have this one. Haven't read it yet, uh, but I got it around Christmas time and uh, I, I kind of flipped through it and really, really nice. They, they did a lot of great work. Uh, the coloring is beautiful. Um, the They just did a great job in compiling uh, these collected editions. And again, great value for the money. Like, these books are like this thick. They're just uh, really great. Highly recommend them. Again, uh, the link is in the description. Star Wars Heir to the Empire number one. Significance of this book is it is the first appearance of Grand Admiral Thrawn. Uh, again, if you're not, if you're just a casual Star Wars fan, you probably don't know much about Thrawn. Uh, but if you watch The Mandalorian, you will have heard his name uh, mentioned by Ahsoka Tano uh, in the episode uh, that she appeared in. Uh, so anything with Grand Admiral Thrawn right now is, again, spiking in price just because Ahsoka 
mentioned him in The Mandalorian. So we are expected to see Grand Admiral Thrawn appear in a live action Star Wars television show in the near future. So people are going crazy for this. Approximate value uh, for this single comic here is between $100 and $400, of course, depending on uh, the condition. Uh, this was back when Dark Horse was doing Star Wars. Uh, I think this was in the early 90s when this book came out. Uh, again, Marvel now owns the rights to all Star Wars comics and things like that. And I don't think they've gotten around to uh, reprinting this in trade paperback format. So my reader's pick for this is actually probably even better than the comic. It's uh, Star Wars Heir to the Empire, the novel. And as you can see down here, it says based on the best-selling novel by Timothy Zahn. This comic is actually based on this novel. Uh, you guys, you have to pick up this novel. Uh, this is the first ever Star Wars EU novel. This, this one here is what kicked off the EU back in the Bantam era of uh, Star Wars novels. Timothy Zahn is one of the most revered Star Wars writers of, our, of all time. And this book here, uh, I have it. Haven't gotten around to reading it yet, but everybody that I talk to tells me this is the best Star Wars book of all time. And so many people out there believe that the sequel trilogy should have been uh, like an adaptation of this book. Like that's how great this book is. So highly recommend picking it up. Link is in the description. Now, uh, the uh there, there are more books there's a thrawn trilogy actually so uh, there's heir to the empire and there are two other books uh in the trilogy if you're looking to pick those up i'll provide uh, links for those as well star wars uh sorry it's supposed to be knights of the old republic uh and this is uh number nine sorry the uh the actual comic is blocking the number nine up there but yeah so this is star wars knights of the old republic number nine and this is the first appearance of Revan. Even casual Star Wars fans should know about Revan by now. Uh, Revan is probably one of the coolest Star Wars characters out there who has never really, who has never appeared in any movie or TV show, uh, to my knowledge. Uh, he appeared first in the Knights of the Old Republic video game, uh, for those of you that have played that. And if you haven't played it, you have to. And at this point, if you're a Star Wars fan, there's really no excuse why uh, you shouldn't have played this game by now because this Knights of the Old Republic is literally available to play on every single friggin' electronic platform you can think of. Like it's on, uh, you can play it on any console pretty much. Uh, it's on Steam. It's really cheap, and it's even on the App Store. Like you can play Knights of the Old Republic on your phone. Okay. Totally worth any any amount of money, really, that it's that uh, it's being sold for. But I know it's really cheap. It's probably something like ten bucks or something. Um, the, the the story in Knights of the Old Republic is just amazing, and that's uh, where we get Revan. Uh, and uh, in this book here, this is before Revan became the uh, the infamous Sith Lord. Uh, approximate value for this book is one hundred twenty to. $500, of course, depending on condition. And this is another one of those books that Marvel has not gotten around uh, to publishing in a collected edition yet. So my reader's pick is Star Wars Revan. And this is the novel also by uh, Drew Carpetian, uh, who wrote the Darth Bane trilogy. He's just a stellar, such an amazing Star Wars writer. Anything he does is just great. Uh, I've actually read the Revan novel. I did a review on it uh, that I can, I will post uh, in, I'll put a link in the description. But uh, the Revan novel is just great. Of all the Old Republic novels, uh, I think the Revan novel is the only one that's a must read for any Star Wars fans. It's just so good. It, it fills in the gaps between uh, what happened. It fills in the gap of what happened between the Knights of the Old Republic video game, Knights of the Old Republic 2, and uh, the Old Republic uh, MMO. So it, it tells you what happens there because 
if you played the uh, the first two Knights of the Old Republic video games and then you went right to the MMO, you're probably a little confused. And you're like, I, I don't get how this happens. <laughs> I don't want to give any spoilers away, but uh, this fills that in and tells you everything. It's just such a great book uh, and it's great as a standalone as well. So pick that up. Link is in the description. Star Wars, Clone Wars number one. And this is probably the hottest book on this list. The significance, of course, is it is the first appearance of Ahsoka Tano. And uh, this book is very quickly becoming probably one of the most expensive modern comic books on the market. You know, when people think expensive modern comic books, they think, you know, like The Walking Dead or, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, but this one, like for a book that only came out, I don't know, maybe 15, 15 years ago, it's pretty expensive. Uh, again, approximate values between $400 and $1,000. I've actually been reading uh, some comic book news sites that have even been reporting that this comic book uh, in high grade, of course, has been selling even for three, four thousand dollars uh, graded at auction. So uh, just amazing. This, this may not be the best time to pick up this book, but uh, with the insane popularity of Ahsoka and everything that's going on with Ahsoka and Disney Plus, and she's supposed to eventually maybe even star in her own series. The story of Dosso did it. Dawson did an amazing job playing Ahsoka. You can only expect that this book is going to rise in price. Uh, I think I think it's pretty safe to say that the, the the value of this book will not go down, and it will just continue to increase. Again, uh, Star Wars: The Clone Wars number one. I don't think has been published in any collected edition as of yet. But if you're looking to uh, read an amazing Ahsoka story, we have the Ahsoka novel, which came out only a few years ago. Also read this one. Really, really well done. Easy read. Uh, and it kind of explains to you what Ahsoka was doing between uh, when she left the Jedi Order in uh, the Clone Wars and when she appears in rebels and explains it's it's really kind of cool because she's alone she feels like really alone in the world and explains it kind of shows you how she's feeling after order 66 she feels like she's the only one that she's not technically a jedi but she's the only you know force sensitive person really that survived it's it's, it's actually really well done so uh, if you're looking to pick that up uh, the link is in the description uh moving on to star wars number two yeah, again, this is the original uh, run of Star Wars that Marvel did. This book dates back to the early 70s, not too long after the first Star Wars movie came out. Significance of this book is it is the first appearance of Han, Obi-Wan, Chewie, and the Millennium Falcon. Approximate value for this book, anywhere between $100 and $600. So let's just put that in perspective. First appearance of Han, Obi-Wan, Chewie, Millennium Falcon. That book is more expensive than the first, or sorry, that book is cheaper than the first appearance of Ahsoka Tano. Like, it's just, it's just nuts to think that uh, a character that's as new as Ahsoka is uh, appearing in content and material that is just so valuable to collectors right now. Uh, the reader's pick for... This book, if you really want to read it, is uh, the original Star Wars, the original Marvel Years, Volume 1. Also have this one. Really, really good. Uh, like, I haven't gotten around to read it, reading it yet uh, in that format. But, uh, again, flip through it. it it's great. They, they've recolored everything. Uh, and the, the characters just look amazing the stories are amazing first six issues were an adaptation actually of the uh, of a new hope and uh the recoloring especially is cool because uh for those of you that were reading the original uh star wars comics from the 70s you'll know that the lightsabers you see here that the lightsabers kind of looked red <laughs> at times 
but it was light side Jedi that were wielding red lightsabers. So it kind of looks out of place by today's standards. So as you can see here, they kind of uh, fixed some of the coloring. So I, I'm really pleased to, to see that. Uh, this is our second last book on the list. This is, of course, Star Wars number one. If number two is on there, number one all has to be on there for sure. Uh, significance of this book is the first first appearance of Luke, Leia, Darth Vader. Excuse me, I'm just going to take a sip of water here. R2 and C3PO. Believe it or not, uh, Han Solo and Obi-Wan Kenobi do not appear in this issue they only appear on the cover and uh if you get this book graded it'll actually credit uh the first appearance of obi-wan and han on the cover but not in the book uh, it's also the first appearance of Grand Moff tarkin and the stormtroopers uh this book is valued similarly to number two that is between 100 and 600 dollars and of course the reader's pick for this one will also be uh, Star Wars, the original Marvel years, number one. Uh, if you really want to go balls out, you can get the Omnibus, uh, which I highly recommend. If you, if, I'm pretty sure it's still in print. Not sure. Actually, no. The Volume 1 Omnibus, I don't think is in print, but if you can track one down, that'd be great. I'll still provide links in the description to the Omnibus. Uh, and I know for sure the, uh, the Star Wars original Marvel Years series, which is um, the Epic Collection what, that you're seeing here, those are all still in print, so you'll have no problems uh, tracking those down. So again, links are in the description. And our last book on the list is Star Wars number 81. And again, this is still from the uh, original Marvel run on Star Wars from the 1970s and the 1980s. The significance of this book is uh, Boba Fett escapes the Sarlacc pit. So uh, uh, for those of you that have been watching The Mandalorian, you'll know that Boba Fett is in The Mandalorian uh, and Boba Fett is also being given his own series. So clearly he escaped the Sarlacc pit. Well, fans want to know how he did that. And that is described in this book. Approximate value of this book is between $50 and $200, depending on condition. If you want to read this without dishing out $200 for one comic printed on Deuce Print, you can pick up Star Wars The Original Marvel Years uh, Volume 5. But this book isn't out yet. It is slated for August 21st release date. You can pre-order this on Amazon uh, if you really want to pick this book up link is in the description but again if you don't want to wait you can uh, read it in the omnibus which is the star wars omnibus volume three has the same cover so this is the going to be the cover of the uh the ascent the sorry the epic collection for original marvel year uh, marvel years volume five but it's also the cover for the volume three omnibus so that about does it for our video today. Really, really hope you enjoyed these picks. Are there any other Star Wars books that you feel are really hot right now that should have been on this list? We'd really like to hear from you in the comments. Always love interacting with you. Until next time, this is Dante D signing off. I will see you all in the next episode. <laughs>